Hello everyone, it is Thursday and that means it's time for another draft video. I post one at a minimum on every Monday and Thursday. This week I think that's all I'm going to manage to do. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoy them. This is the last Masters 25 draft I'll record, I know that much. Um, and this has been a good format, I've enjoyed it. My win percentage, you know, my goal is usually to get to about 60. That's what pro players consider to be decent and uh, we're at 65, so that's pretty good. Um, three trophies is solid. Uh, you know, there are some times where you can have a win percentage of 65% and win like zero trophies. Because if you go two and one every draft, that's actually a 66% win percentage. So, but we had some struggles early in this format. So, uh, we've improved drastically since then. <laughs> so, but yeah, I like this format a lot. I think, um, unfortunately, I think a lot of people may have missed out on it because of the negative response to Masters 25, which, yeah, if you were looking to buy a box of it and have it be worth it you you probably weren't going to unless you were planning on you know getting some drafting out of it uh and, and yeah that's annoying but uh it was a great limited format so this will be our last draft in it and i'll see you guys win the draft fires all right so we could go completely wacky here and take a uh, conflux with our first pick but i don't think that's what we want to do this isn't the strongest pack I could give Pyrehound another chance. He's been in the dog's house for a while for me because of how disappointing he was for me. And things have gotten a lot better for me ever since I got over how much I love that card and stopped, like, drafting it. And I definitely don't want to take it with the first pick. I think we have a few options here. We could take a crab early and go in on doing various combos with it. Um, we could take a squadron hawk early and go in on collecting the set. Or we could take a Twisted Abomination, which is probably just, like, the strongest card in this pack, like, on, in terms of flat power level. Um, Invigorate's pretty good, too, but, yeah, I think it's really between those three, and I think I'm going to go with the Abomination. Yeah. Sundering Titan. Well, if we want to build a ramp deck, that's not a bad thing to ramp into. Um, there's another pack that's not very good back to back so Kavu Predator has some combos most of them are with white cards though not with black cards I mean there's no no guarantee we're playing black Um, I really may just take the Titan here because the cards in this pack are so disappointing we could take Myriad Landscape it is a nice little card that helps you ramp and fix Um, and so maybe it's what I should take maybe that's the safer pick it probably is over the Titan um, yeah, landscape or Titan, I think I'll take the landscape, I guess this pack is just so, so underwhelming. Okay, this one's a little better. We have pacifism, we have counterspell, we have ire shaman. These are all things that I like. Um, kind of leaning towards Counterspell. I still haven't gotten to play a Shadow Mage Infiltrator deck, so if I see one, I might force it. Um, pa Pacifism's good, but there are a lot of ways to make it fall off in this format. I mean, uh, still, it's still pretty good. I mean, I've drafted four and five, you know, I'm sure if you've watched all my draft videos and had those decks at least two and one, I think, in, bo in, all those, in both of those occasions, and I think one of them three and owed. Um, even though it can still fall off, you know, that's, you can sort of, you know, have an aura mancer or two in your sideboard against opponents who can really wreak havoc and that makes up for it. But, um, I kind of really want to play blue black and get a shadow mage infiltrator. <laughs> this is my last draft. So I'm kind of lean. I don't think there's a huge gap between counterspell and pacifism. Iron shaman's good too, but counterspell it is. Okay, well, this is a really late Courser of Crew Fix, so my whole plan may have been for naught, <laughs> because it shouldn't be here this late. Uh, I think people underrate it. I mean, yeah, it can die to a lot of things, but the amount of card advantage it gives you is very real. Um, you know, an early accumulated knowledge, another crab, neither of those are bad, but neither of those are as good as Courser of Crew Fix, so we may be blue-green or black-green. In fact, ideally, we would be one of those, because Courser is that good. Okay, so we'll take Mana War here. I do like Mana War. 
Another Squadron Hawk for somebody. Another Twisted Abomination for someone else. But I think Mana War is better uh, than either of those anyway. Although if you have like five Squadron Hawks, maybe maybe even four, maybe even three, Squadron Hawk might be better than Mana War, but one is certainly not. That low, I was going to say, if that lower scale Koala comes back, we'll be in good shape for what we think we might be doing. Yeah, I think we take this one. Um, Survivalist is nice, Ghost Ship's nice, but this is this is better. Maybe we can pick up some more. Um, okay, well, here's something you could... We could combo with the Crabs if they come back. Perilous Murr is a fine level 2 drop, but Mystic of the Hidden Way is like a legit win condition, and I think I want it a little more than the potential combo piece or the, the solid, solid little 2 drop. Um, yeah. I mean, Presence of God you can use outside of the combo and it's okay, but you really need the combo for it to be good. So I don't know if you're happening. Yeah, blue is very open, so is green. So I think we're, we've are we made the right decision. Do I like Mystic of the Hidden Way more than Woolly Loxodon? I don't know. I'd like to have like two of each, ideally. Um, the Mystic, you know, unblockability is a very real thing. This also combos with the Crab. If we see Crabs coming late, we'll probably pick them up. Um, because I think blue-green is maybe the best color pair. Although, not having Quicksilver Dagger is... But, uh, so Wooly Loxodon or Mystic of the Hidden Way. I think I want another Mystic. Okay. So, probably the Survivalist here. Yet another morph. With some, This one can blow up in, in artifacts or enchantments. Like Pacifism. For example. Um... But yeah, blue-green looks plenty open. I don't know if that other Coatl is going to come back, though. We passed one early, early. I feel like it already would have. So someone else may be in blue-green. We may not run this either, unless we're running a third color. So, um, okay. So I do like Dragon's Ice of Ons. It's a nice little blocker. Plummet's a good sideboard card, but I think we just take another morph. One of the strengths of this color pair, even though there's no real payoff for morphs, is anytime you play a morph, it could be so many things, because this color pair has more than anyone else. Uh, and even if you don't even have a Willbender in your deck, everyone has to be like, God, that could be a Willbender. <laughs> so, and if you don't, you know, chances are it is a Willbender. Okay, so Return Phalanx, if we ended up being blue-black, is nice. Crows and Colossus is an okay morph. I mean... He's not that good if you don't have Cloud Shift, and if we're in this color pair, we're not going to have it just because he costs so much to unmorph. So I think I may speculate on a return Phalanx here. And here we'll take another Dragon's Eye Savants, I think, over the Vessels. We could splash a Sting, theoretically. I don't know if we really want to, but... Another Anox Survivalist. In an ideal world, I don't think... I think maybe you only play one of these main board. But, uh, you know. Okay, well, we got the combo piece for Crab, if uh, we get him. But staying over here for now. It's a bunch of morphs, basically, in lower scale Coatl. Oh, man. <laughs> I really wanted to get Frexy and Obliterator and just go mono black, but I don't think we're going to get to do it today. Maybe some other time. Um, he's just so good. And so fun. Good reason to be mono black. Um, this is a strong pack. It has Epic Confrontation, Man of War, and Horseshoe Crab, which has gone up a little bit for us because of Presence of Gond. Those are our choices. We do have two black cards. <laughs> Should I just go for it? No. Not if I want to do well. Probably not. It's pretty hard to draft a mono black deck when you've drafted two black cards in your first pack. I'm just saying. Um, I think we probably want Epic Confrontation because it's straight removal and that's not something we have yet. So I think we'll take it. And we have creatures who will fight well with it. I mean, Morphs actually fight pretty well with Epic Confrontation. Chalice of the Void. Ooh, <laughs> Pyrehound tried to sneak his way into my deck there. So another Crab, but there's also an Exclude. I think we probably take the Exclude. 
exclude strong. Our deck is just all three drops, basically. The crab combo is nice, but it can be disrupted easily enough. Ooh, yes, please, Will Bender. So there's also a Murder and a Path of Peace, which, you know, those are both really good, but Will Bender's nasty. Um, actually, having one is even better because if they see that you have one in the subsequent games, <laughs> they still have to worry about it. We could use some two drop creatures at some point, but, you know, our pile of. Morphs is pretty fun. And yeah, like I said, there's no payoff, but the more morphs you have, the better your other morphs get because your opponent, the more morphs they see, the more they have to consider and the more likely they are to be wrong about what your morph is. Okay, so Brainstorm is really good with um, lower scale Coatl, but we only have one of those so far. Fierce Empath right now doesn't get us anything, but if we get some like Wooly Loxodons, it will. I do like Kavu Climber a fair bit. Um, and I think maybe I just take it in the end here. Brainstorm's nice. Um, in terms of shuffling our deck though, we don't have any ways to do that yet. And we only have one lower scale Coatl. Hmm. Yeah, I think I take the climber here. Look, something that's not a three drop. Um, okay, so Rishad and Port, you can actually really disrupt your opponent with in this, like, potentially at least in this format. And this pack doesn't exactly have anything else I want. Um, the Dreadmaw is fine, but I think we take the port. I'm not sure whether it'll make the cut, but uh, it's just as likely as the Dreadmaw, I would say. Okay, yeah, our, co our colors are getting cut pretty hard now, um, which isn't good. It was They were really open early, but other people clearly noticed that as well. I think we take a Retraction Helix. We do have one... Do we even have a Horseshoe Crab? Have I been saying we have a Horseshoe No, we have Presence of God. We don't have a Horseshoe Crab. We still take the Helix, but I'm not as happy about it. I mean, Echoing Courage, you know, that it is a good trick. I could think about it but I think I take the Helix. You know, at worst, just turning one of your creatures into a bounce spell isn't so bad. The downside is most bounce spells your opponent can't like interact with and like kill the creature you target it with. So after this format's over, um, I'll run a poll, but I think Modern Cube will be on. For a few weeks until Dominaria comes out and and Rivals of Ixalan will still be around. Um, so I'll probably run a poll to see what people want me to do. Um, Rivals was a pretty popular limited format, so we'll see. So Nettle Sentinel or another Mystic of the Hidden Way? In terms of green cards, we don't have a lot and a lot of them are played face down. White is starting to look pretty open like knight of the skyward eye loyal sentry noble templar savannah lions those are all pretty good i mean these two green these two cards are playable too but we could use some more early drops um i'm just worried he's never going to untap but we already have two mystics i mean a third wouldn't hurt but we need we need more of a curve and less of a you know just like a, a pillar of three drops even though we can technically play these on turn two if we really want to. Most of the time, it's better to get all the info you can. Okay. This pack gives us some options. Flash, we can do some nice things with. Nothing really great, though. Freed from the Real is a pseudo-removal spell that we can also combo with Retraction Helix. Um, so we think we'd probably take Freed from the Real over another Survivalist, too. Curse Catcher isn't anything special here. Um... I mean, with Flash, it would be nice if we had some cooler things to do, but we don't yet. And there's a chance, you know, maybe we'll pick something up and I'll regret that, but we don't have anything to do with it yet. Okay, so now we'll take Totally Lost. Yeah, some people have jumped into our colors. I guess we'll take a Chalice of the Void. This is a Phantom Draft, so it's not actually worth anything, in case you're wondering. Um, 
So Retraction Helix combos with our Freed from the Real and a little bit with Nettle Sentinel. If we have like another green card in our hand, we can we can bounce two things. I think most of our games are going to be won by Mystics of the Hidden Way. So another return Phalanx, another Court Hussar. I mean, I think we take the Hussar. We could actually play it just sort of as a spell that happens to be a creature. Okay, so here we'll take a Fierce Empath. Um, there's a good chance we pick up things that can it can find. We just haven't yet. Here we'll take Jalira, but... I don't think we want her a whole lot. Hannah, don't think we want her either. Yeah, it's too bad they didn't, if there were more of an artifact theme, I guess, I mean, decks where you end up with like self assemblers, she wouldn't be too bad. And you know, especially if you're blue white, you probably have pacifism and maybe freed from the real Maybe, you know, you could have a lot of things. Could have a lot of things. Okay. Well, <laughs> this pack is, I mean, we could try to splash Notion Thief, which isn't the worst, but it's also not the greatest. Um, maybe here we just take a brainstorm. I mean, Ember Weaver is okay, but it's not like we don't have a thousand three drops. I think we do take a brainstorm here over Arcane Denial, Twisted Image. Especially if we can pick up some more Coatles. Well, you might be worth splashing. Um, how many. There's also another counter spell. How many non creature spells do we have? Kind of a lot. <laughs> so we probably don't want them. It doesn't really work in our deck. So Counterspell or Arbor Elf. I could definitely use some more early drops, but I like Counterspell. So I think we're going to take it. Um, Quicksilver Dagger. Timber Pack Wolf number one. I don't think we really want to do that. Um, these guys are both good. We could try to splash Quicksilver Dagger, though without the Crab, it's hardly worth it. Um, this looks for power. Converted mana cost six or greater. Yeah, still don't have that. So maybe we take another mystic. This does give us a source of card draw, which we actually don't have a ton of though. So I think I will take it over like Timber Pack Wolf and yeah. So we're not doing a bunch on turn two, but if we have two blue mana, we can counter some things. Might be a reason not to play Rishad and Port because, um, Having two blue is enough of a challenge on its own. Okay. Um, you know, I wish we'd been accumulating accumulated knowledges. It's also a ghost ship here, but we do really need some two drops. And this is one of some late game value. So I think we take it. Um, I think it's a little too late to take our first accumulated knowledge and feel good about it. So right now we're not playing Fierce Empath, we're not playing Cortisar. Only playing one main deck, Anox Survivalist. This is good for our mana, but there's an epic confrontation too, so I think we just take it. I do like Giant Growth and Kabu Climber. And the Flooded Grove. I would be happy with any of those, but I think we want to punch a dragon in the face. Another mana war. That's a nice, nice little pickup here late. Um Not sure Nettle Sentinel is going to make the cut the way our deck has ended up being. We just have so few green cards. So, yeah, he's, I don't think he does. I think we play the one retraction helix probably. So, you could help us splash like Stang or Rurik Thar if he comes back. I don't find myself highly likely to play Wild Heart Invoker or a second Brainstorm. 
I don't think I want to splash Sting either, though, and it's highly unlikely Rurik Thar comes back. So it's probably more likely this makes the cut. Yeah. Okay, I'd like me some forest cycling. Uh, it's something we can find with our aberration, too, for whatever that's worth. There's also a phantasmal bear, but I think I'm just going to have to do, you know, realize I'm not going to be playing mini permanents on turn one or two. It's not the end of the world in this format. So, Ember Weaver or a Splashed Notion Thief. So, I think, I think taking Notion Thief for our sideboard is probably a little better. This does give us a way to block flyers, but uh, against opponents who are drawing a bunch of cards, Notion Thief out of the sideboard. Ooh, Rurikthar did come back. Well. Huh. Should have taken that land. I guess. Um, once we get to turn three, I mean, we'll be playing stuff, so... And we can, you know, counterspell or brainstorm early on. Uh, Niv Mazette came back, too. He's harder to splash, but when you have Myriad Landscape, it gets a little bit easier because it can search up two mountains, which is what he asks you to do. Do we take a Timber Pack Wolf just to have a two-drop or another Mystic? I think I take a Timber Pack Wolf. Maybe we pick up some more really late here. Another Kabu Climber. Should we play Curse Catcher just to have an early drop that's a little bit disruptive? Nah. I don't think it would make the cut. I don't think this Kabu Climber is either, but another Cortisar. Rurik Thar is not going to make the cut. I'm not sure Timber Pack Wolf does either, though we do. I mean, in a pinch, it's not like we can't play two drops. You know, we have. Several creatures that can be two drops if I really want them to be. So, yeah, we'll cut that. Um, oh, yeah, we don't want Presence of Gond. We may not want Retraction Helix anymore. We have two real removal spells, two Mana Wars, and a Totally Lost. Not to mention two Counter Spells and an Exclude, so... Not to mention a Willbender who can redirect removal spells. Yeah, I think this deck looks solid. I mean, this isn't exactly what our curve actually looks like because there's a bunch of morphs here and there's a few here, but um, I think it's fine. So probably more like 9, 8. Although so many of our green cards have morph and we have an Elvish Aberration for Forest Cycling. No reason to run Fierce Impath, by the way, when it can only search up one card. Didn't get any Loxodons. That's when it gets to be a little better. Um, but we still really want to have two blue on turn two if we can help it. Since our deck isn't going to be doing much else on turn two. All right, this looks like our deck. See you guys in the first match. All right, so we're going into our last first match in this format. I think this hand's a keep, even though we have no blue. Partly because we have a morph, and partly because we have Corsair of Crufix, and we're also on the draw, so we have a good chance of drawing blue. Um, so, and if we don't, you know, we can at least play Corsair or Fathoms here, assuming we draw a land of some kind. <laughs> I guess that is that may not happen, you know. So, ooh. <laughs> We're working on that not happening, aren't we? All right. We're going to do it on this draw step. <laughs> no, we're not. Okay. So we got to discard something. I think it's going to be Fathoms here because we don't have any islands. Oh, Reform. That is an obnoxious creature, especially if our opponent has ways to get rid of their own Reform. Um, I think I just play Corsair of Crufix here. We have Kabu Climber on top. A 
Good, there's a land. It is another forest, which obviously isn't ideal. But um, I'm okay with it. Um, we're going to play Dragon's Eye Savants face down and end our turn. So maybe I should have played the Mystic because we don't really want to attack into this reform. Um, it's basically a wall. If we can, if we can bounce... If we can kill it and then bounce the token with Mana War, then we're in pretty good shape, but there's no guaranteeing that we can do that. It's almost like we have no islands in our deck, huh? Um, okay, so we will play Mystic of the Hidden Way face down. And we'll end our turn. Their lower scale becomes a 3-3. We will probably block it with uh, Dragon's Eye Savant and then get a look at their hand. They have so much mana. Although, we could block it with our Courser, but eh. Let's find out what's in their hand. Show them freed from the real, I guess. Presence of Gone, Giant Growth, and Echoing Courage. Okay. They may be about to use that Giant Growth. <laughs> yeah, and they do. Hello. So they know we have Totally Lost in our hand now, which is nice. Now I think we can attack into Reform without being especially concerned. Um... So they do have, yeah, so let's attack with our Courser. Echoing Courage won't be enough to take down our guy. Okay, so they're going to block, which is good because the token will come into play and then we can play Mana War, bounce the token, and then we don't have to worry about the chain of tokens that uh, can be generated by this very... I can already play the land, right? Yeah. So then we'll play Mana War. And we'll bounce the fish. Now that we're finally hitting lands, thanks in large part to our Courser, I think we're going to pull ahead. We're basically drawing extra cards off of Courser at this point. So this is a 4-4. We know they still have Echoing Courage and Presence of Gond in their hand. I'm not super concerned about that. I'm excited to have an additional blue mana. Ooh, Ranker's kind of annoying. We will just take six. So what he still has in his hand is Presence of Gond and Echoing Courage. Those are the two cards in his hand. So yeah, we're just going to take six. It'll be nice starting to leave mana up for our counter spells, which we'll finally be able to do once we draw another freaking uh, island. I'm looking forward to it. Okay, so we'll play the one off the top of our library. That means there's another mana war coming, which is pretty good news. Um, I think I'm just gonna turn... Eh, there's no reason, actually. We're going to turn the Mystic of the Hidden Way face up, but that seems sort of unnecessary. So let's just attack with our guys and hit them for six. Dropping them to 14. And then we're going to play a Morph that allows us to leave up both Exclude and Counterspell. So... I think we're kind of okay just taking another six to the face here. 
uh, seven to the face here. Man of War will be joining the party soon and reset lore scale to a much smaller size. Okay, so we're going to counter that. We know the other two cards in their hand, and we're not nearly as worried about them. There's still Echoing Courage and Presence of Gond, so... We're going to take seven. They're just going to go for it here and hit us for nine, I guess, because why not? No, they decided not to. Yeah, it would have been a little wasteful. Okay, so we'll play this land. Go to 11. We can also exclude it once it comes back down, which is pretty gross. We'll attack for eight. Drops them to six. And we'll play Mana War. Yeah. All right, well, that went well. Corsair of Proofix smoothed things out for us after a rough start with the mana. Um, so opponent has Presence of Gone. They probably have the Crab combo, which makes your Traction Helix a little more attractive because we can break that up, but we can also break it up with Willbender, Counter Spells. Totally lost, so... Maybe the Helix is a little better than Totally Lost in this in this scenario. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, the thing I don't like about the Helix is I have to have a creature in play, but our deck has 15 of them, so... And it costs a lot less. So I think we'll go with our Retraction Helix. And we even have the little mini combo with Freed from the Real, if that ends up being relevant. Um, so we have, we have a little bit of additional upside, even if we don't have... The crab combo, we can sort of make our own crab with Freed from the Real. I'm surprised they didn't put more combos in for Freed from the Real. There aren't that many creatures with relevant tap abilities. I mean, if you have a lot, like, you know, you can do it with Spike Shot Goblin, but it's not like the tap ability is free. You have to pay blue and a red every time, which obviously is worth it, but still. I mean, I guess they put enough combos in this set, right? Yeah, then our survivalists can also break up those combos. So whether they have Arbalest or just Presence of Gond, so that's good. We have lots of ways to stop it, and that's, that is a key thing in this format. If your deck can't stop Crab Combo, you are kind of in trouble. Um, you don't always run into it, but when you do, you're, you're in trouble. That was very odd the way that happened. Um, I think we keep this. We don't have any early creatures, but we do have, um, you know, we can counter something early. Ooh, Arbor Elf, turn one. It's less than good news. And we can use Freed from the Real as removal later on. Humble Defector you can do some silly things with. They're just going to attack us. I'm cool with that. Wow. It's opposite of our start last time, so hopefully things can <laughs> go the other way like they did last time. So I think we probably counter whatever creature they try to play here, if it's a creature. Unless it's a, like a one drop. But I doubt it is. Yeah, we'll go ahead and counter that. Because we would rather not especially because we don't have a board. Well, now we have an Epic Confrontation. So we have two of our removal spells. Kavu Climber will get played one day and be able to fight something. Dang, that's... <laughs> it's aggressive, but I also have no board, so I kind of don't blame him. Just start beating me to death with a 3-1 Arbor Elf. Ooh, that's pretty nice, though. 
This goes back to their hand though, so it's a little less nice. But it is still tempo. Question is whether it's better to just play freed from the reel. And eh, I think we'll play Man of War. We can then use it to fight the Arbor Elf once he replays it. Might be about to get excluded anyway. Yeah, it does. So Kabu Climber can come down though. Okay. Take three. Yeah, we'll play our Climber. Who will be able to trade with the Coatl um, this turn. Unless they have a trick in their hand, which we know they like. So maybe we don't try to trade. Goes to 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, that's not good. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, they may kill us very quickly here in game two. Okay, that will help though. I can epic confrontation. I mean, yes. I can man of war and epic confrontation here. If it, if they let it happen. Let's see if they have another exclude. Oh God, they do. Oh no, just arcane denial. Bad, it, I mean, it's the same thing. Um, especially because we don't get to draw a card yet. So we're just dead. Yeah. All right, well. They stomped us in that second one. See if we can do a little better this time. Do we, yeah, I don't think we need an extra survivalist. We have enough going on. First, yeah, this is a good one. Will Bender cannot redirect Epic Confrontation, which is annoying, but apart from that, it's pretty good. I'm trying to decide if I should brainstorm. It's frequently better to wait until later to brainstorm, just because then you know more of what you need, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't think we want to do it yet. Yeah, we'll play an island here so we have Counterspell up, though I highly doubt we want to cast it here. I think we play Willbender first, just because it's such a nuisance. Oh man, <laughs> now I wish I'd played a forest first, but which I should have done, knowing I had Corsair of Crufix. Well, I wanted to leave man up for Counterspell. So let's cast this Willbender face down. So the main thing we'll be using it for is probably redirecting auras. Uh, like Rancor and stuff like that to our own guy. Ember Weaver, okay. All right, so. I could play the Courser, but there's just such a good chance that it gets Epic Confrontation. I'd rather play it when I can protect it with Counterspell. Um, so I think I'm just gonna play Mystic of the Hidden Way face down. Brainstorm can also help us set up some Corsair of Crufix stuff. Uh, that's worth noting. Something's probably going to get Epic Confrontation here. Hopefully they don't hit the Willbender, but... Yeah, we just take two. All right, Ambassador Oak, sure. Okay, so I uh, should have not done that that way. Could have gained a life, but we will play Corsair of Crufix here. And we'll leave man up for Counterspell. Yeah, I could have, for multiple reasons, I shouldn't have played the land. I could have also played this one at the top of my library. So, so we have Counterspell and Willbender. Um, if it's Epic Confrontation, we basically have to go with Counterspell. Uh, so... Yeah. 
So do we just take this? We could double block, but yeah, I think we just take this. Uh, yeah, and we'll counter that, seeing as we don't have a way to bounce it right now. Okay. All right, so... The question is, do we play Brainstorm here so we can get the Coatl under our hand, or do we save the Brainstorm for after we draw the Coatl? <laughs> That is the question. Um, I think saving it is probably worth it. So we'll play the land, go to 14. Um, so if they have a combat trick, we can redirect it. So I think we're probably just gonna leave our blockers back and this time we actually will block and redirect um, a combat trick if we get that opportunity. We could have attacked, um, but the more blockers I leave back, the more interesting things can happen. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna block. Let's go ahead and double block him and single block there. And let's see what happens. You may just end up, okay, so we're gonna go Willbender. And make the giant growth target our Willbender. They may have another trick, they do. Um, so that makes him a 5-5. Five, five. So I can still save my Courser. I think we give up the Willbender and save our Courser here. Um, yeah, because it'll have seven toughness. And we kill that. Yeah, we definitely come out ahead there, I think. Thank you, Will Bender, for sacrificing yourself for the cause. Okay, so... I'm going to play the Coatl. Let's do it like this, though. See if it gets excluded or something. Okay, then I'm going to cast Brainstorm. Okay, so we want to put the land on the top, top. Um, so... Yeah. Oh wait, we already played a land, I think, didn't we? No, we didn't. It'll let us play this one. Okay, so the question is, do we Epic Confrontation something or is it better to just unmorph my mystic and start attacking? I think it might just be better to unmorph my mystic. I wish we knew it was in their hand. We haven't gotten one of our dragon's eye savants. Um, yeah, we'll just attack with the mystic. And leave these guys back to block. They're gonna brainstorm now. Luckily, they don't have a Coatl in play. We have seen theirs every other game. This is the first time they've seen ours. So that happens.
Okay, so luckily we can kill that with Epic Confrontation, and that'll be great tempo-wise because uh, they just paid six mana for it, and we can kill it for two mana. So it's going to be good. That, that's how you... It goes a long way towards winning limited games when you can do things like that. Uh, yeah, we'll use its ability. Worth noting, we can forest cycle um, to make a land come to the top of our library, but I don't think that's something we need to worry about right now. So I'm going to go Epic Confrontation... Kill the Dreadmaw. They're tapped out, so it is gone. Yeah, all right. So we won our first match. Let's see if we can finish off with maybe a trophy in this format. All right, going into our second match. We would like to play first. This is a good hand. It's got Willbender in it, so, you know. Not to mention Man of War. Uh, in both our colors, which is good. And we'll lead with an island. We will play a forest on our second turn, though, in case we draw a Courser of Crew Fix. Oh, although we don't have two forests, so it wouldn't matter if we did draw it. Sigh of the Shinobi. Okay, now it does matter. Um, so we'll do that. So this thing's annoying. I mean, because it can pump a creature uh for free basically yeah and here's thalia probably just gonna have to mana war her um i could just play dragon's eye savants face down um but yeah i think i'll play mana war let's go with mana war bounce thalia they have to replay her it looks like we're up against a very aggressive deck, which you don't see a ton in this format, but when they come together, they can really punish slower decks. Yeah, that's what we're up against for sure, between Frenzied Goblin and Thalia, so we may be in for some fun. And by fun, I mean not fun. The bad news right now is if we want to flip our Dragon's Eye Savant's face up, we have to reveal a blue card in our hand that I don't really want to reveal. Um... So I think I'm actually just going to play Dragon's Eye Savant's face up and in the turn. So the Goblin can attack and make this unable to block, but my Mana War can block the Goblin. So there's that. I think I drafted an aggro deck like twice in this format. Oh, that's not good. That's where Willbender would have been nice. Just redirect that at Thalia's face. But we're going to take four here instead. Yeah. They are, you know, low on cards. And that, that does matter a little bit. Okay, so... We're going to play Willbender face down. Maybe this time around, if they fire off a Kindle, we can point it right back at Thalia's face. That'd be great, right? Darn it. <laughs> They're just making their guys bigger now. Okay. Well, the good news is they don't really have any good attack to make right this second. The bad news is they'll have one later. Interesting. They wanted to make Kong Ming bigger. I see. So this is something I could redirect, but it wouldn't be worth it because... It doesn't make a difference. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I could block uh, Thalia, uh, but first strike and all that. So we will block Thalia, but then we'll take two. Okay. So what needs to die the most? Kong Ming or Thalia? I almost feel like the answer is Thalia, right? Uh, Kong Ming right now. Yeah, let's kill Kong Ming. And then we'll end our turn. Also means I have to pay mana now to equip the side of somebody, which is good news. Um, you know, it sort of slows down, slows their roll. 
So they attack with both. Make the morph unable to block. I'll block Thalia with my Dragon's Eye Savants. I mean, I could redirect this so that I can just block the Frenzied Goblin, which at some point, maybe that'll be worth it, but we're not there yet. That's for sure. I'm guessing they equip that for free, yeah. Ooh. That's gonna be fun. Um, because we can blow up the Psy of Shinobi and flip this into a 3-2 all at once. Um, so we're weathering the early aggression from this deck, and I think that's a good sign. Um, we need to get some of our sources of card advantage to really go over them or something. You know, draw. We have big creatures. We need them. Uh, any of those things would be good. And if they try to fire off a Kindle here, I'm going to be so happy. I just want another Kindle to get cast, please. Please. <laughs> That's the torture of playing against a deck with a bunch of morphs that's blue is, you know, they have, there's a good chance they have one Willbender in their deck, but is it in play face down? Who knows? It would be flavorful-ish, I guess, if this could actually see face down creatures too, but it, it, it can't. So, okay, so Angelic Page comes into play. Do they move the side of the page? They do. Interesting. And a dude with double strike. So we're probably just going to blow up the side at the end of their turn. After we see how they attack. They don't. So we're going to turn this face up. Blow up the side. And then it's our turn. Okay, so Elvish Aberration's pretty beefy. The bad news is if I play him, I don't also have Willbender mana up. So maybe I just play Coral Helm Guide for now. I mean, we're dealing with Fencing Ace and stuff anyway. I mean, I guess he could block the Fencing Ace. Is it worth not ha having a turn where I don't have Willbender mana? I think it. I think it might be. I think I'm gonna do it. Am I gonna regret this? Maybe. But let's just cast the big guy. We've been looking for a big guy. Big guy can slow down the opponent's uh, presence. I mean, they can attack us in the air, but and of course they have frenzied goblin. And that's a problem, but. Um... Yeah. God. And of course, they were waiting until we didn't have mana up for our stupid Willbender. Okay, so how much freaking damage are we going to take here? It's not quite going to be lethal, but it's not going to be good. So yeah, we're bringing in another survivalist between the pacifisms and the Psy of the Shinobi. I'm guessing they make this unable to block. We're going to get to kill the Frenzied Goblin. That's the good news here. Oh, interesting. But yeah, we definitely kill that goblin, and then we take three, five, six, seven. Yeah, so it's gonna hurt. But we're not gonna lose. Actually, we're gonna take less than that because we can block something with Dragon's Eye Savants. All right, so you get out of here and you get blocked. So this can pump it, but only to four. So it probably pumps this, hmm. Either of these does four damage, so yeah, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. So if it pumps that, oh, well, it's that, that, I didn't take that into consideration, and I should have, because there goes our Willbender. Hoop. Okay, well, we can play another face down creature to freak him out in the meantime. And yeah, I think we just end our turn.
Okay. So I'm going to block here. And here. Question, you know, they get a flyer if I do this, but it also hits a lot. It doesn't hit as hard. I'm about to find out what's in their hand, which isn't going to hurt. Um, but, you know, I think I'm just going to take the three here. Let's see what they do. I may just end up giving up my morph for fencing ace, which I don't think is too bad. Yeah, that's that's what I'm going to do, I think. Okay. But we're at six now, and they have a flyer in play, so, you know, that part's not so good. And that guy's big. Still can't attack. Well, actually, it can with the help of Angelic Page. Ooh. Three, four, five, six, seven. So, yeah, we can play Coral Helm Guide and bounce something. We could bounce our own Anox Survivalist and use it to blow up Pacifism. But I doubt that's what we're going to want to do. <laughs> but we could do it. We could. This freaking Thalia man has been really obnoxious. Okay. Um, we will block here. Ooh, I actually don't have mana for totally lost because I effed that up anyway. So that's not good. Um, yeah, and we'll block there and we'll take two. Three. And they can get a flyer out of their graveyard. But I have to pay six for totally lost. What the hell? They had two of those in there? <laughs> okay, so this isn't too bad. Um, but we're dead to flyers now. So, four, five, six, seven. I have to pay six for totally lost. Uh, I think we're just dead. I mean, I guess... Let's see what we can hit with fathoms here. It's kind of going to come down to that. So let's turn this face up. Turn two islands. Yeah, that doesn't help. So, okay. Yeah, aggro is not good news, but I don't know what I'm saying, but we don't really have a sideboard for, I mean, we are bringing in the survivalist. Maybe we cut freed from the reel. It's pretty bad. Again, and totally lost actually is probably worse. It's just such a clunky bounce spell against an opponent who's this aggressive. Could bring a Nettle Sentinel, I guess, as another creature who can trade early. But I think we're good. I think bringing in a second survivalist is... Excuse me. The best we're going to do. I would like to play first... And this is a pretty good hand. We do have Willbender again. Hopefully this time we don't uh, get her killed. Him killed? Him killed. Jackal pup. Yeah, well, I have a slightly more aggressive start. After we weathered that first wave from the deck, that deck last game, I thought maybe we had a chance, but we did not. We never really got going. Not leaving man up for Willbender ended up being our greatest mistake. Freaking Thalia again. Do I just kill Thalia immediately? Because I can. I think we do. Get out of here. You ruined my life last game. Between your stats and your abilities. We also have a second epic confrontation, so it's an easier chance to make. Easier choice to make. Geist of the Moors. Okay, we can punch that in the face with our morph. Ooh, but maybe we don't. 
Um, yeah, we don't have the mana to do both anyway. So I think we just attack with our Coral Helm Guide, offer up that trade. I don't think it's going to be happening. Drop them to 15, and then we'll play our Coatl. And if it gets to survive, we're going to be happy. There's a very good chance it eats a Kindle or a Pacifism or something, though. We go to 11 here. Does her koala live? It does. That's good news. Okay. Um, I think we kill the big flyer with Epic Confrontation. And then we play our more face down. And I think I'm willing to trade with Jackal Pup or Savannah Lions with my Coral Helm Guide. Yeah, we'll block with Coral Helm Guide on Jackal Pup, see if a trick or something happens. Pumping it to 3-2 is not big enough for it to not die. Yeah, so they'll pump that. Drop us to 8, but we actually drop them to 13 in the process. They play a Balduvian Horde here or something. No, just Valor and Akros. No big deal. Um, okay. So I think we... God, if they play Hordling Outburst here, it's going to be brutal. But our Coatl can't block effectively either way, so it's going to attack... And we'll play this morph face down. We have mana up for to morph either of them, but if if they play Hordling Outburst here, we're so close to just being dead. Just mages to the wheel, okay. I'm less concerned about that. Still not good. Okay, playing two creatures is a problem. Okay, so that means ugh. <laughs> Basically that we're dead. I have to chump block the Savannah Lions. I don't think we want to double block it. Ooh, actually it won't be a chump block because we can unmorph and kill it. So at least there's that. Get out of here. Go to five though. Ooh. So, God, we're one damage short of killing our opponent. Just with Brainstorm. I think we have to do it now because what we want is another creature who can block, etc. So, yeah, we'll do it now. We'll brainstorm. We did not get another creature who can block. And <laughs> we tapped our only island, so we can't even play Freed from the Real if that's what we want to do. We can play an island, though. And I think, I think we'd rather draw Freed from the Real next, yeah. And that at least leaves it, lets us leave Willbender mana up. So we can't really attack here. No, no. Once we have lethal, we can, but we didn't have it, don't have it. They might just have pacifism now. If they do though, we have Willbender. So crap. <laughs> Spike Shot Goblin pumps our whole team. They have to be a little cautious, but not super... They can just attack me with their flyer, for example. I don't... That may be all they do. That's probably the smart thing to do. So, if we draw Freed from the reel, which we know we're going to... Okay, so we go to three here. I think... Maybe we play it on the page. So Coatl goes up to a 9-9. Nine, nine. Yeah, 
Yeah, well, the problem is there's lots of problems. Um, uh, yeah, but I think we still go freed from the real and put it on angelic page. Interesting. So a reason not to do that would be that we can redirect a spike shot goblin trigger to angelic page. But if our opponent draws a creature, that won't be enough to kill it anyway. And we can still redirect it to the fencing ace. So, yeah, so let's put the, the freed from the real. Of course, then we don't have the blue mana for Willbender. God. Well, we'll put it there for now. They have to block this if I attack, but they can kill me on the backswing. So it's kind of... I think they might still be able to kill me on the backswing because unless they elect to use Spike Shot Goblin's activated ability, that's the only way that they would not be able to. Um... Well, no, they have to draw, they have to draw a creature to pump their guys. <sighs> oh, that, that is not good. Um, okay, we just get to draw seven cards, which makes my koala huge. Why didn't we draw exclude, you guys? We drew, yeah, we lose. I didn't play that as tightly as I certainly could have, thinking I didn't think about the Mages of the Wheel, for example, at all. Um, so they are going to play a creature. That means this is a 2 2. Okay, so actually, we're still not completely toast. Uh, are we? <laughs> Do we have to be able to, because we can take two from this and survive to when it gets bigger that we'll have to tap it down. So, because if we take two from it and then uh, bounce the Spike Shot Goblin, redirect the Spike Shot Goblin's ability somewhere else, we can survive. All right, so now we have to tap this. Yeah, we're we're dead to Spike Shot Goblin. Ugh. Wish I had more blue mana before drawing it all at the end there. Then we could have done a lot more. All right. Well, we're not going to get a trophy, but maybe we can at least finish with a winning, winning record in our last one. All right. Going into our final match, trying to finish two and one. So this hand has no blue mana in it, but because we have two morphs, I do think it's keepable. Um, see if I'm rock. Uh, morphs do make your hands easier to keep though that's for sure because there's a decent chance we draw an island anyway but even if we don't we have two more so we can play are we up against another really aggressive deck because that doesn't bode well for us look we drew blue anyway um might brainstorm at the end of their turn certainly wouldn't hurt I take two, and then I'm sure they're going to play something in their second main phase. No, uh, yeah, well, we won't brainstorm. Um, I think we play Dragon's Eye Savants face down. That gives us a better way of knowing what we really want to be excluding and so forth. So but they may also try to spend an epic confrontation killing it, which is when you get some serious value out of this morph because... If you just get to reveal a card, um, you're definitely coming out ahead there. They would be able to attack, though, that turn. But they would not kill our morph. And that's what they do. We'll show them Brainstorm as it's the least frightening. So, like I said, they will be able to attack us. So they have a Dreadmaw, an Assembly Worker, and a Zoetic Cavern. Okay. So probably save the exclude for that Dreadmaw, 
We don't need to worry about leaving mana up for exclude for a little bit at least. So yeah, like I said, they can attack us here and they will. So we take three. Okay, so I'm gonna play Mystic of the Hidden Wave face down. Not super worried about Assembly Worker. They actually don't have a way to untap their Nettle Sentinel right now, so that's good. And we will brainstorm at the end of their turn. They may have drawn one, especially if they're mono green. They really so that's probably Zoetic Cavern. It might not be. They may be trying to fool us. So now we're gonna brainstorm. Ooh, Corsair of Crufix. So, um, yeah, we obviously we put lands back. Now, trying to leave mana up for exclude is probably a decent plan. Although we can't, so we won't. Uh, they're not quite at the mana they need anyway. Oh, actually they are. No, they're not, because this has to unmorph. Yeah, no, they're not there yet. Um, so I'm gonna play this Courser of Crufix. Play this land. I guess if we really wanted to be tricky, no, yeah, just putting the lands on top made the most sense. Um, and we'll end our turn. This costs two to unmorph, so while he does have six lands in play, basically, um, he doesn't have six mana. For Mr. Dreadmaw. And that is what we want to save up for because our deck doesn't have many ways to kill a creature that big. Yeah, assembly worker, sure. Right, so land. Wow. Well then. <laughs> At least we have Corsair of Crufix. Um, so we're going to turn this face up and we're going to attack with it. Start getting in there and we have man up for exclude, which will help us draw two cards, which is good given that we really need to find some more action soon. I mean, chances are they try to play Dreadmaw this turn. You know, when you have a deck with two excludes and two counter spells, Dragon's Eye Savants gets way better. I mean, it's already good. <laughs> They definitely look mono green. So tap all your lands and try to play your Dread Maw. Come on. Yeah. Get out of here. All right. Fathoms here will be nice for finding us some more fuel. Enoch Survivalist can kill Assembly Worker, which is, in general, something we should be keeping in mind. Um, we will attack with Mystic of the Hidden Way. Question is whether I should Fathom Seer now. I think maybe I should, because... Then maybe there's a land on top that we can play. Um, yeah, let's... We will have to discard some cards and whatnot, but we don't really care. We have like a thousand lands in our hands, so. Okay, still not a land on top, but. We actually won't have to discard anything either. We'll play this face down, and they know what it is. They know it's going to kill their assembly worker at some point. Do they have another huge creature? If they do, luckily we have totally lost. Oh, no 
Okay, they really don't want to lose their guy. I think I would go after the Mystic personally, because he's not like the Assembly Worker is. I mean, yeah, it sucks to get it killed. Don't get me wrong. That's why I was going to kill it, but the Mystic of the Hidden Way is slowly killing them, so <laughs> that's not what that was going to do. It was just going to... Uh... There's Freed from the Real... Right. Could leave mana for totally lost, but I think we just play Kavu Climber. Opponent does know generally like what's gonna be in my hand, and that's sort of the downside of Courser, but it doesn't really matter because of the card advantage. If all it did was show the shop top card of my library, it might matter, but that's not all it does, so. Now, I guess this can deal with the Dread Maw, even if it is annoyingly inefficient. Okay. So, they got another assembly worker. All right. Um, this time we're going to play an island. Not terribly concerned because I have a 0 6 in play, so I'm just going to attack them with my Mystic and end the turn. Leave up mana for totally lost in case something crazy happens. Which, yeah, they know I have in my hand. They also know I'm about to draw another one of these, so that's not great news for them. Bring the thunder, my friend. Okay, so we'll block with Dragon's Eye Savants. If he tries to use a trick or something, I think we cast Totally Lost. Which is kind of funny, because they have another self-assembler in their hand, so they would just get it back right away. So it wouldn't be as good as it normally could be, but it would be okay. Okay, that we probably do cast Totally Lost on. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Get lost. Totally. Okay, they scooped. Yeah, it was Zoetic Cavern all along. Um, yeah, I think we're putting in another survivalist. We know they're running at least three assembly workers. And totally lost isn't bad here because our opponent's playing some big clunky guys. Freed from the real isn't great. It never is. <laughs> Especially when you don't have combos with it. So maybe we lose Freed from the real. Yeah, it's all right, but. Also, since I recorded the beginning of the draft, I did post a poll. Um, and people generally want to see Modern Cube, so that's what next week will be. Then there'll be a week without draft videos, but the good news is there'll also be a week filled with Dominaria limited review content, so that's the uh, the upshot. upshot. And I'm excited to fully review that this set. It looks really fun. Um, so the question is whether we play a forest on turn two or an island, so we leave up counterspell. If we play a forest, that means we can play our courser right away. Timber pack wolf. If we draw another forest. Um... I mean, we don't know that we're going to draw another force, and even if we don't, we have, like, Mana War or a Morph as a plan. So I think leaving up counter spells is a little bit better. It's not a lot better. Um, there's... I might not want to counter something they're playing right here, but having the choice is good. Another Timber Pack Wolf. Oh, what the heck. Get rid of it. Ah, so they're not mono green. They may just be splashing red for like Rurik Thar, which wouldn't be a lot of fun for me. Gotta say. Okay, so we did draw another green, which is good. I don't think we want to play Mana War yet. I think we just play Dragon's Eye Savants. Corsure of Crufix, will you win us the game again? Let's see if they, they try to remove our morph again. <laughs> 
I wish they would. So, I think we block here and see what happens. All right, well, we're not going to let it die. We'll show them. We'll show them totally lost. We get to see everything in their hands, so it's probably a fair trade. Mountain, Mountain, Elvish Aberration, Ember Weaver. That Weaver is kind of scary, but the Aberration is the biggest concern we should have. Um, the Weaver is only a 2-3 right now, so... Okay, so do I play Courser of Crufix here? Since it can block both of them, and I know they don't have any tricks, at least right now. Yeah, let's play our Courser. Start getting cards off the top of our library and gaining life. Just such a nice, it's such a cool design and you know, the incidental life gain value is great. All right, no attacks. Works for me. We'll play this land off the top. Um, I think we play Mystic of the Hidden Way face down. Yeah. So they're going to play Elvish Aberration, but we can use Mana War to bounce it. And eventually Lore Scale Quaddle will be bigger than it is. There's a chance they Forest Cycle or something. But I don't think we use Epic Confrontation here or anything. I think we're fine. I think we are fine with the board the way it is. So yeah, Modern Cube will be next week. I don't think I've actually played that cube, but, you know, it's cube. Um, be less powerful, certainly, than, the, than the, the, the powered cubes. Big surprise, right? But, um, yeah, I uh, haven't played it yet. So, okay, so we did not get a land on top there, but we do have one in our hand. We go to 20. So the question here is... And I think the answer is we play our Coatl. We could turn this face up, but I think starting to get our Coatl online and bigger and bigger is probably better. So we'll play Mana War here, making them recast their six drop, which obviously is great news for us. I'm gonna miss casting you, Mana War. Maybe you're no, you're not in modern cube because you're not in modern. Sadly. The rest of these cards are. Like literally everything else I have right now is all in modern, but not counterspell. The aberration is back, but we can make a creature unblockable now and just start attacking. Um, and that's a race we'll win. We can block the aberration anyway. Ooh, now we can't. Okay, Cobb Climber. You gotta get bigger, lower scale quaddle. Um, I think we're just gonna end up taking six this turn. We're gonna turn this face up. And attack them with it. We can totally lost at some point um, to slow things down over there, but for now, I think if we can get six unblockable damage on the table, and a continually growing lower scale quaddle, a little bit of incidental life gain, I think we're in pretty good shape. It's almost like they sided into a redder deck. <laughs> so we're gonna take six here. Go to 14. Man, we cannot get a land on top of our library right now, huh? So we can kill it now, but we would also lose our quaddle. Um I play Kagu Climber here and see if I can get a land on top. Is that greedy? Maybe. <laughs> we also make this a 5-5 though, so it is relevant. It you know the op yeah, we did get a land on top. So now we can epic confrontation. We go up to 15. So, yeah, you'll have seven toughness. The question is whether or not our opponent will have... Do we know it's still in their hand? I don't think we do. No, we don't. Well, let's go for it. Get out of here. 
you get your ranker back, but nothing else. Okay. All right. So now, well, we can still really only attack with our unblockable. But we're about to flip a second unblockable creature face up and have counterspell and totally lost to protect us from whatever our opponent might do. Yeah, that does make him bigger. All right, well, Dragon's Eye Savants is going to block that. If they have a way to finish off my Dragon's Eye Savants, then... And they do. That's fine. Fine by me. They're out of cards in their hand. They have one blocker who can't block like any of my creatures effectively. So, <laughs> I like the way things look here. Um, if we just bounce their Timberback Wolf, do we win? I think we might. 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, yeah, we do. Just to count one more time here. Yeah, opponent scoops. All right, two and one in the end. First and third match definitely with the way I like those matches to go. And we have enough play points to enter into the modern cube I'll be doing next week. So thanks for watching. This was a really fun format. I think, seriously, it was the best one in a long time since, like, Triple Cons of Tarkir. You might think I'm crazy, but I really enjoyed this format. Uh, lots of nostalgia, lots of fun combos. It was nice sort of having a break from really strict archetypes. Um, it was nice being able to draft dirtily control decks. That's my favorite thing to do, and that's what I did in, like, 80% of my drafts. So... Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next week for Modern Cube.